This is a math talk for undergraduates on Fermat's last theorem, where I will explain how Fermat proved his theorem for the case of exponent four. So I'll just recall what Fermat's last theorem is. So Fermat's last theorem says that x to the n plus y to the n equals z to the n has no solutions where x, y, and z are positive integers and n is the exponent n is greater than two. So if n is a product of two numbers, both greater than one, so if we have x to the a, b plus y to the a, b equals z to the a, b, then we see that x to the a to the b plus y to the a to the b equals z to the a to the b. So if it's true for some exponent, then Fermat's last theorem is true for all multiples of that exponent. So it's enough to prove it for n equals four and n an odd prime. Because every number greater than three is divisible either by four or by some odd prime. Well, the case of an odd prime is extremely difficult and was finally solved by Andrew Wiles um, after work by Kummer and others. The case n equals four is a lot easier and was done by Fermat. And I'm going to present Fermat's solution because I frankly can't figure out how to fit Andrew Wiles' solution into a short YouTube video. Um, and we're going to do this using um, Fermat's method of descent. So the idea of his method of descent is Fermat shows that if you've got a solution of the equation x to the four plus y to the four equals z squared, then you can find a smaller solution in integers x, y, and z. And this gives a contradiction because you can't keep finding smaller and smaller solutions. This isn't a misprint, by the way. I really do mean z squared, not z to the four. Um, well, so how do you prove it? Well, first of all, we need to look at the equation x squared plus y squared equals z squared. So this is the famous Pythagoras equation that has lots of solutions like three squared plus four squared equals five squared. And let's try and find all solutions of this. So we can write x squared equals z squared minus y squared equals z minus y z plus y. And now we may as well assume x, y, and z co-prime. So there's no common factor dividing them. Otherwise, we could just divide up by that common factor and we'll assume x, y, and z are greater than zero to eliminate silly cases. Uh, and now we, we can examine whether they're odd or even. And Remember, if something is a square, then it has remained a zero or one mod four. And if we use this, um, we see that one of X and Y must be even and one must be odd, because if they are both odd, then this would be two mod four and couldn't be a square. So we're going to assume that Y is odd and we factorize it like this. So X is even. So then we find X over two squared is equal to z minus y over two, z plus y over two. And now z minus y over two and z plus y over two must be co-prime, as you can easily see. And the product is a square. So each of them must be a square. So, so let's write z minus y over two equals a squared, z plus y over two equals b squared. And you can see that of the numbers a and b, one must be odd and one must be even. So this gives us the solution. We see z minus y is equal to a squared. z uh, is equal to 2a squared and z plus y is equal to 2b squared. And from this, you can solve for z and y. And we find z is equal to a squared plus b squared and y is equal to b squared minus a squared, and x is equal to 2ab. 
And we can see solutions of this. For example, if we put A equals two, B equals one, we get the solution three squared plus four squared equals five squared. And if we try other values like A equals seven, B equals two, we find that 45 squared plus 28 squared equals 53 squared. So this is seven squared minus two squared, and this is seven squared plus two squared and so on. So, so this gives a, a very easy way of finding all solutions of Pythagoras' equation. So now let's look at what Fermat um, did. So we look at the equation x to the four plus y to the four equals z to the four. So we're gonna take this exponent to be four for the moment. And of course, this is a special case of Pythagoras' equation because we can have x squared squared plus y squared squared equals z squared all squared. So now we just substitute in the solution we had for the Pythagoras' equation. And um, we may as well take one of these to be odd and the other to be even as usual. So we find that say x squared is equal to 2ab, y squared equals b squared minus a squared, and z squared is b squared plus a squared, but we don't actually care what z squared is. And if we look at this, we see um, one of b and a is odd and the other is even. And in fact, if b is even and a was odd, then y squared would be three mod four, which is impossible. So we see b is odd and a is even. And if we substitute this in here, we see that x squared is a product of two a b and b must be co prime to two a. So we must have a is equal to two times a square and b is equal to a square. And now we substitute these into this equation here and we find y squared is equal to d to the four minus four c to the four. And let's mark that because it's going to be quite important. So what we've done is we've started with this equation and we found a solution of this slightly different equation. Well, what's the use of that? Well, let's carry on a bit further. So we can write this as four C to the four plus Y squared equals D to the four. And this is um, again, a form of Pythagoras's equation. It says two C squared squared plus y squared equals d squared squared. So this is this is a form of Pythagoras' equation, and so is this. Um, so we can substitute in the solution of Pythagoras' equation that we had before, and we find 2c squared is equal to 2ef, and d squared is equal to e squared plus f squared, and y is equal to, say, e squared minus f squared, except we don't really care about that. So we've got these two equations here. And now we look at this, and e and f are co-prime, and their product is a square. So this implies that e is a square, and f is a square. And now let's take this equation and this equation, and substitute e and f into here. And we find that d squared is equal to g to the four plus h to the four. And let me put a red ring around this because it's another key equation. And now let's compare this equation with this equation. Well, it's not quite the same because this is saying a fourth power is the sum of two fourth powers. And this is saying a square is the sum of two fourth powers. But now we do something a little bit clever. We notice we never actually used the fact that z squared was a square. So let's cross out this four and change it to a two. And we can cross out that two and change it to a one. And the same argument still works. So what have we shown? Well, we've shown that if you've got a solution to this equation, then we can find a solution to the same equation, which sounds 
completely useless. All we've done is we've shown that from a solution to an equation, we can get a solution to exactly the same equation. And we just seem to have gone round in circles. However, the solution has become smaller. You see, um, the numbers A and B are going to be smaller than, um, so, so the numbers C and D and Y are going to be smaller than the numbers Z, X and Y in some sense. And similarly, you find that the number D here is smaller than the number Z there. So what Fermat showed is from any solution of this equation in positive integers, we can find a solution in smaller positive integers. So if we've got one equation, we can repeat this and just keep on getting an infinite sequence of smaller and smaller positive integers. And this is impossible. So we see that x to the 4 plus y to the 4 equals z squared has no solutions for x, y, z greater than zero. Of course, it's got a trivial solution for x, y, and z equal to zero. Um, okay, um, Wiles's solution is very much more difficult than that, so I will stop there.